We're waiting on Eric to jump in. Yep, he went and was going to log on. And that gentleman just left, so um, he's going to go and hop on real quick or attempt to. So it looks like we have somebody else. Sorry, I got trapped by the back door from a customer. I wanted to come to the meeting and it got them all set up for the. That's okay. Thank you for doing that. We'd like to like to have folks uh, participate. So, um, Kim, are you City of Gladstone? I just am. Sorry. Okay. Can, um... No problem. You went away. Okay. I just want to know who's all here. Okay. All right, uh, with that then, it is a little bit after six. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order for the Gladstone City Commission regular meeting of March 22nd, 2021. Uh, roll call. Mayor Thompson. Excused. Commissioner Akala. Excused. Commissioner Hunter. I'm here. <laughs> Commissioner Mantela. Here. Commissioner Staczynski. Here. Okay, the first item on the agenda tonight is public hearing for fiscal year budget 2021-2022. Um, I'll now open the public hearing. This is a public hearing only to address the budget. We'll have public comment uh, later in the agenda, but right now this is a public hearing to address public comment on the 21-22 budget. Meet the uh, public hearing is now open. If anybody wishes to speak, they may do so. This is Michael O'Connor. May I speak? Yes. The staff have requested a 4.5% increase in the electric rates based on a study which appears to be flawed. The city of Gladstone transferred, or more specifically borrowed, $310,000 from the electric fund. The money was used to pay for trucks for the Public Works Department. The Public Works Department is funded with property tax dollars as it's part of the general fund. The only way funds could have been available to borrow from the electric fund would be if the electric rates had been inflated. The same rates which led to this significant surplus are still in effect. Therefore, the rates are too high by the amount borrowed, $310,000, plus the amount which is to be paid back from the general fund of $30,000 per year. The total the electric rate should be reduced by is $340,000 per year, which is an 8% decrease in rates. If the general fund could not pay for the trucks in the first place, then can the general fund pay back the $310,000? As for the overall budget, looking at the most recent audit ending March 30th, 2020, on page 68, revenues total 3.1 million expenses 4 million. If you go into detail, property taxes don't even cover the cost of public safety. And this is not a one-off. The previous year had a shortfall of 800,000 and the audit report for 2018 had a million dollar shortfall. Every year the city is significantly short in general fund revenue. So where do you come up with this extra money each year to balance the books? Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Ma uh, Commissioner Mantla, wasn't that yes. wasn't that rate study done under request of Mr. O'Connor? That rate the, study was yes, uh, Commissioner Hunter is correct. That rate study was done under a settlement in the legal action that Mr. O'Connor brought against the city as part of the um, settlement agreement. That study was agreed upon by both parties, and uh, the outcome of that uh, rate study was. Um, looked at and agreed upon by both parties that that um, entity would produce that and the city would uh, 
move forward with their recommendations, which we did. So that rate increase is due to the rate study that Mr. O'Connor uh, requested. And, and wasn't that also the company that was suggested upon because it, it was an independent company? And that same yes. company was the one who said that our rates were actually much lower and then there was a recommendation to increase it even more so. And I think the commission decided not to increase as much as is being um, explained that we should increase it. That is also correct that- uh, Okay, I just wanna make sure the was, facts are straight yep. as yes, opposed to what company, was just explained. That company was uh, agreed to mutually in the settlement agreement that that uh, entity would, that third party entity would be used for the study. They, they did uh, have some uh, rate increase suggestions in the study and suggested that we would, um, to bring things in line uh, quicker, we could even, and probably should have raised the rates even more drastically, but we chose not to. We chose okay, to, I just uh, wanna make sure that we had the correct facts. So I, I appreciate that. No, thank you for bringing that forward. And that is, that is everything you said is, is, uh, is correct. Okay, thank you. All right, the, pu the public hearing for the 21-22 budget is still uh, open. I know there was some folks that were looking to call in. The city manager was getting them set up. Um, is, do you know if they are, is that what they wanted to speak to, uh, Eric? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure he was going to uh, go home and he just, Sounded like he just wanted to uh, participate in the meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna wait like maybe another minute or two to give that person maybe a chance to do it. And uh, if they wanted to uh, dial in, I see. Let's see. What do we have on participants? Okay. Well, this is Michael O'Connor. Can again? Can I jump in? Uh, we're gonna wait. We're gonna give everybody a, a chance to uh, speak who hasn't spoken yet. Very good. <clears throat> Well, I don't think that, I don't know if that person's gonna get uh, get online here, but I've waited about two minutes for him here. So we're gonna keep things moving along. And if they do jump in during public comment, they can also address uh, that also. So um, Mr. O'Connor, did you wanna make one brief comment? Yes, I just wanted to make the comment that irregardless of what the study says, the facts are that there was extra money available in the electric fund that was able to be transferred or borrowed to the general fund. So it might be the study says to do whatever, but the facts are the facts. There was more money in the electric fund than what was needed and that was able to be borrowed. I mean, I'm not sure how- else sure, Matthew, It sounds like again, it sounds like again that uh, the city staff, city manager and the commission prior to Mr. O'Connor's um, term in office was is now quite frugal and able to utilize funding that's afforded to us in a lawful in a an appropriate manner. So I'm still not quite sure what the concern is. My concern? The concern is that the electric rate should be fair and equitable and reflect the cost of the service, which means if there's a surplus it should go back to the people that are paying the electric bills. 
Would you not the, agree on that? The study showed that the surplus was not adequate to maintain the asset if a major uh, repair or replacement of portions or all of that asset needed to be um, replaced due to an emergency or some other uh, major problem. So actually the rate increase was suggested to bring it back in line. So we are not in a financially strapped position, which uh, they suggested we are not at that point right now, but we are could be close to it, very close to it in the future. And we don't want that to be the case. And so we took the appropriate steps to properly fund that, uh, that enterprise fund. So. so is there a shortfall now that we were not, we would not be able to restore a transformer if it failed? No, that's no, that's not the case. But the, the, as, as things age and move forward, that things need to be replaced and in five and 10 year budget plans that things need to be addressed. And with the projected, the study was very well done and very in depth. And uh, they, that was their professional and very well uh, presented suggestion. And we followed through with it. We, we, we took them up on that to keep things in a uh, fiscally sound position moving forward for the future. So that's where we are with that. So if there's no other comments by anyone else for the public hearing. The electric portion of the rate study was done by the, the contractor that was chosen. And it was also done by a, a contractor um, and WPPI. So there was two rate studies done on electric and they pretty much mirrored each other without looking at each other's data when they were doing the rate studies. I was, I was very uh, impressed and felt very confident in the thoroughness of the study and uh, how detailed they dug down into the usage data and uh, the, at the condition of the assets and uh, the outlook for it in the future. So it was very well done and very well presented. Um, so it wasn't something that uh, I think that uh, any of the commissioners thought was lacking. So, all right. With that then, I'm gonna close the public hearing on the 21-22 budget. Uh, we are now looking for, uh, if I'm correct, Kim, we, we're going to need a roll call vote on this, correct? Yes, we'd need a motion. and then A motion. And, you, and You don't have to do a roll call, but I certainly can. If you would like. Okay, I wasn't sure. On the, I couldn't remember on the budget. It'll be yeah. the next meeting we do the appropriation ordinance. Um, that requires. Right, that's where we actually appropriate yep. the millage, correct? Right. Right, okay. All right. So we're looking for a motion to approve the budget. I'll make a motion to, to approve the budget as presented. I'll support. All right, we have motion and support. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right, moving on now to general public comment. This is for anybody who'd wish to comment on anything on the agenda or not on the agenda. Um, at this time, you can speak to that. Just looking at our participant list here to see if we have anybody. I don't believe there is anybody right now. Don't see anybody calling in. Is that correct, Kim? Nope, I don't see anybody else Popping other than up. who has been on the line. Okay. But. All right. With that, then we're going to move on from public comment to the consent agenda. There's almost half the alphabet on there under the consent agenda, so I'm going to let everybody read that. What those are? Uh, is there any uh, discussion on any? Items under the consent agenda, or is there a motion to approve? 
I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll support. All right, we have motion and support for the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, moving on then. No unfinished business. Moving on to new business, item A, advanced metering infrastructure presentation with Mr. Phil Hansen from WPPI. I believe Mr. Hansen is with us. Yes, hello everyone. Good evening. Are you able to see my screen? Do you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Um, so here tonight to talk to you um, a little bit about advanced metering, answer any questions you have, um, and also talk about how it ties into WPPI and, and the services that we offer. Um, I know Gladstone's using a lot of our services today um, that tie in nicely with advanced metering. So I wanna walk through that and then answer any questions you have. As I'm flipping through these slides, I have a couple here, um, shouldn't take too long. Uh, feel free to jump in, ask any questions as we go. Uh, you know, so the basics, I think you've seen some presentations on advanced metering already, um, but the real basics are that you have your AMI meter. It's um, basically a little computer now instead of just a meter that you know, years and years ago was a spinning dial. Now it's a little computer, actually can send information out to the collectors, um, which would be put around town uh, through radio signals. Those collectors connect back to WPPI to a head end system. That's the, really the software by the vendor. Um, Honeywell or Elster is one vendor, Census is another. Um, I saw you had a proposal from Tantalus. Those were, are the head end systems there. Um, when you get the data to the head end system, it's, it's just that raw data. And then a meter data management system, which is the boxes on the right here is really what takes that information, puts it into a usable format and then you can use it for billing and, and many other things. So on the advanced metering side, uh, WPPI supports Census and Elster. Um, back in about uh, 2010, 2011, a task force of members looked at uh, many different vendors out there, um, ultimately came down to Census and Elster as the two that they had as top picks. Um, and the reason they cut it down to two is it's expensive to maintain the software for these vendors. Uh, so they didn't want to have WPPI supporting many of these. They, they wanted to pick two to give some members some choice, um, but pick the two that are seen most uh, economical and also uh, reliable. So they picked these two. Um, WPPI hosts that software at, at our location. Um, we manage the meter read schedules, which is what goes out and reads those meters on a daily or, or a couple times a day basis. They collect 15 or minute or 60 minute interval data from those meters, events and alerts, things like low voltage, high voltage um, outages. Um, and then we also take care of upgrading that software on a regular basis. Uh, the meters and the gatekeepers or the radio collectors out there also require updates at times to take advantage of the latest tech uh, features and technology. So we also take care of those as part of our service. Um, meter data management system is really where the power comes in. Once that data goes into the meter, meter data management system, something that's available to you under our service, um, we make sure that data is clean and have a full set of information for that customer for every interval. Um, that system is what controls doing things like remote disconnects and reconnects. Um, so you can log on to there and do that. Provides a lot of reports. Um, I didn't include too many of those, but I have a couple examples coming up on some of the reports that we can do with that, that system. And then it also drives our outage management system. We have a, a, what we call an outage management light that can be used by your staff to see outages and actually get text messages if there are outages near in your area. So with that meter data management system, one of the things is we're able to do is build some tools around that. Um, you know, this is a simple tool we built where members can log on to this site um, and it's a transformer loading tool. Um, in the past, you really don't have a good idea. It's very hard to identify if a transformer in your system's overloaded or underutilized. Um, if it's overloaded, it can burn out faster. If it's underutilized, you're paying too much on for losses on that. It has a high loss factor. Uh, so here you can, enter in you know, a couple meters, you know these five or 10 meters are connected to a transformer 
and it'll go back through all the data and give you the peak load on that transformer um, and how often it hit that peak load in, in history. So a good way for your staff to see, see those and, and right size transformers. Um, a lot of members I see using this tool when they replace a transformer now to know um, what size to put in there and make sure it's, it's not too large or too small. Um, on the water side, if you do this, uh, you, staff gets a daily water leak report. Uh, when you read once a month, you can be only as, as recent as telling someone they had a leak a month ago or within the last month. With this, you can identify it within days and tell someone that they have a water leak, really cut down on those large bills and, and wasting of water. So another report that our members find you know, really valuable. Um, I talked earlier about the outage management system. This is what members have access to to log on to, to look at outages. Um, the example here pops up. It shows you the meter number, account number, and the time that outage started. Uh, has your service ter territory drawn, drawn around here. Um, and then through the system, you can click some buttons. You can do a check status and it'll go out and check to make sure that meter's really out. Or if it came back, if it came back, it'll close this. Um, one of the advantages of having these systems all together and at WPPI is we tie this into Northstar, your billing system. So every outage that happens, it gets reported from AMI, gets put into Northstar. So if a customer calls you, now you can look up that customer and they say, hey, I've had four outages in the last month. What's going on? You can call up Northstar. You can verify if that really happened um, and have that information in front of you. Where in the past, it, it really didn't get logged and you didn't know um, if it was happening or not. Um, so as I talked about um, when I started this, you have a lot of the, the products you already use from WPPI on our services, and it really all ties together. And that's where this, this gets powerful and also saves a lot of money because it's expensive to tie systems together and do that integration. Um, but the benefit of our service is we're doing this for many members, so we can spread the cost of those integrations over many members. Um, we only pay for those integrations once versus each utility paying for them you know, all the time. So in the middle of here, we have Northstar. That's something you've used since 2012. Um, on the right, going around here clockwise, we have my account. That's the online portal where your customers can log on, pay their bills today, um, mm -hmm. see their monthly usage. InfoSend is the nice bill you send out. Um, it's an outsourced bill print company. So puts it in a nice format, puts some graphs on there and sends that out. Um, by tying that into Northstar in my account, you can see that bill right on my account if you're doing electronic billing. So then around the bottom are a couple other services that tie into um, Northstar. Retail billing compliance is a, a checking service to make sure people are billed on the right rates. Um, outage management was a screen I showed you earlier. Um, shared meter tech is something that's available if you go with our, our AMI service. Our shared meter techs help install those gatekeepers and make sure that they're put in the right place. So your radio signal, your radio system works correctly. Um, and then meter data management and advanced metering go hand in hand on the left um, as part of our service. Um, once you implement advanced meters, the My Account site here that your, your customers have access today just automatically turns that on when the data starts appearing here. So our meter data management system sends all the data to this site. And they can start seeing not only um, monthly usage, but daily usage. And they can drill down all the way down to 15 minutes if they'd like on here. Um, this example has daily usage with temperature on the graph. Um, some of the widgets you see in your portal today, um, kilowatt hours. Um, well, right now you see monthly, but here it shows kilowatt hours latest day. So what would you use yesterday? What did you use last week? And it can comp compare those. Um, you can also set alerts in here to say, if I use over X gallons of water, alert me. So it'll keep track of that over time and alert you if you use over a certain amount in a month. So another way to, to get advanced leak detection. Um, some of our members are implementing full outage management systems and actually have the ability to report outages through this site now. So they can click on this, report an outage. Or if AMI sends in and if they have an outage, they can text the customer and say, we know about your outage and we're taking care of it. So if that two-way communication gets enabled through those integrations we have between all these different products. Um, 
software is only as good as the training you get for it and knowing how to use it. So here's um, a slide on a little bit of our training. We really focus on training how to use Northstar Energy IP, that's the meter data management system, um, and have a lot of open calls among the members to talk about those systems, if there's things they want to improve in there, or really how other members are using uh, the systems and the data they get from those systems to get full advantage of it. Um, I believe a lot in just continuously improving the value you get from the, that software you have and the information you have. And through this forum, through talking to our support staff and talking to other utilities using that same system, you can really move ahead with that. So that brings us to you know, who's using this software. We have 40 of our 51 members using Northstar today. You're one of those. Um, we have 38 of the 51 using advanced metering. Um, Crystal, in, up in kind of your area, we have Crystal Falls, Norway, and Florence. They all have North Star and advanced metering. Um, the Ghanis has North Star, and they're working on or considering putting in advanced metering. Um, most of the utilities we work with have a plan in the next five years or so to move forward with AMI. Um, I believe you have AMR now, a, a drive-by system. Um, worked well for many years, but a lot of those are being phased out because um, the companies are phasing them out. They're not, not making some of the AMR meters anymore, some of the technology. Uh, and there's also some costs in keeping those running. Some of the software that they have for those AMR systems is um, being retired, requiring utilities to make an investment in AMR. And a lot look at it as if I'm go going to invest in AMR, I might as well make that jump all the way to the technology that gets me that full two-way communications. Um, so I can take any questions. One thing I didn't touch on is security. I know you had questions on cybersecurity in the past and, you know, are these new meters secure? Can someone disconnect um, them, hack into them? We take that very seriously. And um, just like we protect all of our you know, operation power plants, everything else that WPPI has, we do the same with the advanced metering systems. Um, we have a private network that goes from those radios back to WPPI to keep any hacker from being able to get into those systems. At WPPI, we have the AMI systems isolated into their own segment, um, you know, very controlled access to those systems. So you can never say never, but it's very unlikely that we could get anyone to hack into those systems. We, we have the best security um, you know, available protecting those. Um, we have very limited access to any of those systems from outside of WPPI um, or your member office. Excuse me, um, Bill, if I could jump in with a question here. Um, since uh, this is what you're talking about, this um, would it be possible for somebody to access the meter so it's report, reporting incorrectly? I'm thinking under reporting. No, um, it has a lot of tamper flags in it. And if anything really happens to that meter, um, it, it reports a tamper back to us. Um, as far as getting into the radio signal, that's all encrypted. So that's encrypted. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking of it, falsifying a signal. So it's reporting, a fault, you know, giving real data, but it's a real signal, but it's giving you yeah. false data. Nope. That's handled very strictly by the, the radio systems and the meters um, okay. exchanging keys on a regular basis okay. and making sure it's encrypted. Yep. Okay, thank you. So any other questions on AMI? So Darren Hunter here. Um, really quick, do you, does this um, offer our customers the ability to, to pull up, say like my dad's in lower Michigan, uh, he's in with Consumers Electric and when there's an a storm that's coming in or has gone through, I can pull up to see if his, if his electrical is out um, just because he's an elderly, you know, my dad's elderly. So we make sure things are appropriately um, for him. Is that something that this will be able to offer as well? This gets, we, I'm sorry. Yeah, it gets very close to that. And then that's why we call the system that comes along with this outage management light. Um, most of the AMI meters, well, they try to all report in when there's an outage. You don't get 100% um, accuracy. You know, they don't all make that message through the radio system. Um, 
at once. So we get a good representation of what's out and we can display that for your customers if you do wanna uh, put that on a map. Um, but to get full 100% coverage, you need something called an outage, a full outage management system that actually does some prediction. It knows if these 20 meters are out, it really means these 40 are out because the fuse is up, up line. Um, so you can get close, but it, it's okay. not perfect on this. So at the very minimum, at least if we can see, or the customer could see um, if their power's out, then they can at least make contact call to find out if they, just, if they have power or not and, and go from there. Yep, yep. Okay. They could see a lot of, there looked like there's a lot of outages in our neighborhood. And usually okay. we de, um, de-identify it. So what you really do see, there's 10 in this neighborhood out. You don't go down to the house level because we don't want to keep some privacy in here too. Sure. Okay, thank you. Sure. Does, does that... Uh... That outage management, does, will that push notifications directly to linemen? So like yeah. on a Sunday afternoon, they'll get that notification right away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, it does do that. Uh, some other communities have, have had a lot of luck with that on the small outages where you have one or two out, customers out and maybe it's a vacation home or something. And you know they're out, but they're not there. So you can fix this before they even realize it and, and get to their home. Good, thank you. Sure. Another question. Uh, I guess this is for uh, Mr. Hansen or Skip also. Um, what What is the projected life of this system? You mentioned that most uh, municipalities are moving away from AMR because they're not manufacturers aren't supporting that anymore, and they're moving to the AMI. Is this AMI or this iteration of AMI, is this something that's going to be supported at least, I mean, for what we're looking at spending here, is this something that's going to be supported a ways into the future or in five years, it'd be like, well, that's no good anymore. It's something new. Yeah, it, it is a big investment and the life cycle that the manufacturers say are 20 years. So I would anticipate these meters will be supported okay. and running for 20 years. You may not be able to buy that same meter, but the radio systems will be backward compatible to make sure you can keep reading that meter okay. using the same okay. functionality. I guess that that's, that's, that is my question. You know, I mean, yes, the meter itself might change, but the infrastructure and the, the way the system works is not going to be outdated. And yeah, since order. we started this, uh, Crystal Falls was one of the first ones out there, 2012, I believe they put in their system. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time we were buying one of the styles of meters that are called Rex two meters. Um, we've been buying those all the way up until last year. Now we went to the, a different model called the Rex U, but they both still work with the radio, same radio system. It's just Where are Rex we in U. that 20 year life cycle of that uh, system then? And uh, you said mentioned 2012. So are we nine years into that 20 year cycle? Um, no, they've upgraded the, they've upgraded some of the radio systems since then. Um, if you'd buy today, you'd be using the meters that just came out in the last year or two. Uh, mm -hmm. the radio systems are, are fairly new. Um, and the software is really what sometimes drives obsolescence. And we've yes. upgraded several times. So um, that's one of the things our services, our staff is always looking at upgrades. And we have something in the queue every year to upgrade. So we stay up to date and the software vendors know that they have to at least support these meter reads for 20 years. So we haven't had any, any issues there. And how's the, uh, the hardware on the end of this? Are these pretty robust? Have you had any problems with them? Like a bad batch or having to replace them, um, you know, before it's anticipated? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen many problems. Um, you know, among the membership, we have about hundred and, 50,000 meters out there now. Mm -hmm. um, I did probably see one problem early on in this process with a batch of a thousand meters or so. Um, but other than that, not, not many problems. Is there a, is there a warranty on these or anything? Or... They do have a warranty. Um, the standard warranty is a year and yeah. going through WPPI, Elster's, um, Elster or Honeywell, they're the same company really now. Um, they've extended it for WPPI members two years. Two years, okay. Skip, I'm assuming you're in, uh, you're familiar with this and think this is uh, the appropriate route. Uh, yes, um, considering the handhelds we use for the AMR right now, 
they're out of support. Um, those are going to have to be sent in. And that is the cost of right around $30,000. That's the $30,000 upgrade you re refer to in your uh, background report? Correct. Okay. So um, I guess if you know if you put that 30000 into those handouts to keep the AMR going, you, you're going to push this AMI back even farther. And you won't have all the benefit from it. And uh, also, I was talking me and the billing clerk this morning, we, we, we started talking about disconnect meters and uh, the price you have in front of you was for complete residential disconnect meters. Now, uh, we decided we could probably get away with like 100, 120 of those and the rest be non-disconnect meters. That lowers the price of the entire project by about $88,000. Just on so the electric side. Okay, on the electric side. Now I'm looking at the, um, I guess it'd be page two of the report, the titled Gladstone Honeywell AMI project. Yep. Um, which we have four different meter suggestions on there. Is that what I'm looking at? Electric, electric water, water, and electric water again. The I'm just trying to see. The uh, Which first ones we're talking about is uh, just electric uh, meters, different styles. Okay. And the second is uh, some of the controls and the repeaters. And the third section there, it says water. That is their meter. That's their meter. Okay. Yeah. One thing that should be noted to the water fund cost of 196680 you left it far right down on the bottom mm -hmm. that would be uh, divided amongst water and wastewater okay filtered uh, crystal falls have their water meters hooked up they do they've done electric and water Uh, was this, was this, I know we talked a lot, so many had so much budget items. Was this in the budget, Skip? Yes, it was. Okay. I thought it sounded familiar. I just, some of those meetings got long. I, I know for the, when you were talking about the, the leak, uh, finding the leaks, uh, especially probably the most, uh, common one we get is a running toilet. Um, but again, we don't find it till a month and then uh, the reeds come in and then uh, Patty goes through all the reeds because you're always gonna have those people that are on vacation. And then she sends a copy out to, uh, to the water department and they go through the list just to double check it because we try to protect people from getting a big bill. And so a lot of times it'll be, you know, five weeks. So it might be five and a half weeks before uh, we get to or get a response from the homeowner. And in the meantime, they can go through a couple hundred thousand gallons of water. So yeah, it adds up fast if you yeah. have a, a 10, 15 gallon an hour leak, it adds up pretty quick. Um, and I've seen a lot of members have really good success with talking to their customers early and getting those fixed early to avoid those big bills. Uh, I think it's really helpful around that. Um, like I talked about continuous improvement, a thing I wanna implement in the next, next phase of our My Account site is automate that. So we can tell people that they have a leak just to, if they're signed up on My Account through email. So take that even one step further, your, reduce your office staff time on that, and just email them. The system knows it's on a report. Um, we'll warn them in advance that way. So factoring in the fact that we're looking at $30,000 anyway, really looking at spending about 109,000 to 
uh, begin this uh, upgrade plan. Right? Is that about right for this year? 139. It's even, a, it's even a little less than that if we don't, if we go with, uh, we talked about just getting 40 disconnect meters and yeah. we're to start. So that lowers it down by about another $25,000 for that first year. You said that was 88,000 that we would save over the, over the whole project? Over with five years? Of non-remote disconnect meters? It's actually, it's actually over the first three years. That's when all the electric meters are purchased, purchased in this plan. Okay. Correct. Is there any, re um, other than the fact of, yeah, it sounds good to save some money always, but is that something three, five years down the road, we'd be kicking ourselves saying, boy, we should have spent that extra, you know, 33, you know, 32,000 every year to, to have this. I don't think so. Our, our, most of our disconnects are, whether they be in seasonal or in forest turnoff, they're, they're at the same location <laughs> every month. Okay. And there are some meters that we won't, you know, we won't touch in 20 years. So. Mm -hmm. And so to have that, uh, that advanced equipment there really is necessary. Right. Yeah. Just to throw a, a, a little opinion in there and I don't make any money from Elster or Honeywell selling the meters. Um, you know, I know a lot of communities that have gone all disconnects. And one of the benefits is um, you're not chasing customers around because a lot of times it disconnects. Um, I don't know exactly the, the layout of Gladstone, but a lot of them, they're apartments. Um, they're people that are moving around town. And you start running into billing errors when you start trying to move meters around to follow a person if they don't have disconnects. Um, so some communities have gone all. Um, others that have done it a little different, and I know you have a couple year plan, like a five year plan to roll these out. You could put a disconnect meter in as you disconnect someone, um, you know, the first time. So you have a pallet or two of disconnect meters, and when you're going to disconnect someone, you go put one in there, and then then that's at that house. So that could be part of your rollout plan if you want to cut down the number of disconnects purchased. Yeah, we would have a little flexibility, you know, if we wanted to do more than we we were even talking. But I don't think we need to do the the hundred percent. Yeah, you know, and maybe 30% would really give you good coverage in some of the buildings where you have to disconnect more often. Right. Are you thinking the disconnect meters for more for uh, rental units? Is that kind of where you're thinking we need so many, but not 100%? Yeah, yeah places yeah, makes, where... Makes good sense. And people are moving in and out. Yeah. I, th I think it's a good, a good plan. This is something I know we talked about years ago and uh, maybe a little bit ahead, but it now might be the time to do it. Um, so we're looking at doing the, we're moving forward with this now to get it approved. And when would we, if this was approved, when would, when would the project start? Almost immediately we'd start uh, ordering the equipment. Okay. I'd make a motion to approve the launch of the AMI project with the reduced number of disconnect meters as suggested by uh, the electric department superintendent. No support. All right, we have a motion and support. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That project's moving forward. Thank you, Phil, um, for the information. And uh, thanks for uh, the, the help in the future. I'm sure you'll be lending us. Yeah, look forward to, to seeing you guys move forward. Um, thanks for listening to me tonight. Have a great rest of your meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Next item under new business item B, Parks and Recreation Board appointment, Mr. Jeremy Cook. Jason, you have some uh, info on this for us? Yeah, um, if you look at uh, your packet, his application form is down. Is, is 
is on there. Um, currently, he serves on the Board of Review uh, right now, so he's, he's, he's kind of familiar with the city of Gladstone. Right. Uh, he, he worked with us um, in the, at the sports park in Van Cleef Park before. Um, he's been, he, he was in the Air Force for 10 years. Um, I've talked to him a, with him a little bit. Uh, he, he's he's uh, excited about being on the board. Uh, he wants to help out Gladstone any, any way he can, and uh, he's a resident here. So, um, uh, yeah, so he's uh, he seems like a good candidate. The, uh, the rec board uh, approved him uh, last rec board meeting, and uh, um, just looking for your guys' approval. Okay. Is there a motion to, to approve Mr. Jeremy Cook? to the rec board. I'll make that motion. I'll support. All right, we have motion support. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you to Mr. Jeremy Cook, and I'm sure glad to see you. So he's taking the, putting on another hat there. So two, two things now, Jason, is that yep. correct? Yep. So we thank him for his uh, service. Uh, next part, item C, Parks and Recreation Board reappointment, and I don't know about this one, Jay Bostwick. I don't know. He's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping he can bring pizzas to the meetings, but he, he hasn't he hasn't brought any pizza yet. So. Well, it's kind of, well, yeah, it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> I, I make the motion to uh, reappoint Mr. Jay Bostwick to the record. We'll support. Motion to support. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you, Jay, for jumping back on board there. All right. Item D, committed fund balance. Eric, you got to yeah. direct us on this one? Is Vicki on board? Otherwise, I can take it. Oh, there right she is. Here. Oh, I, I didn't don't see have a, I just don't have a video because I was not feeling good today, so I wasn't in the office. But um, I didn't even this, see your name there. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, this is something that we do every year before the end of the fiscal year, according to GASB 54, all fund balance amounts that are to be set aside for a specific purpose need a formal action by the commission to be set aside. Uh, Public Safety Equipment Fund has $47,479.28. Uh, Public Safety Fire Truck Fund, $85,842.94. And Public Works Equipment Fund, $17,236.88. All of these amounts um, are dollars that are being set aside for future equipment purchases. Uh, fiscal effect, total committed fund balance is $150,559.10. And I did um, include in the packet the spreadsheet that I keep um, with the detail. Uh, so we're just looking for a recommendation to set aside these fund balances at the end of the fiscal year. So moved. No support. No. Okay, was that Darren? Commissioner Darren, you did? Or okay, I'm getting confused. Yep. I've got a bad connection here. You beat me to the punch there, Brad. I was going to make that motion. Okay, I'm just trying to keep it moving here. Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> so, okay, so was I. <laughs> All right. Motion and support. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you, Vicki keeping us uh, lined up with that. Thank you. MERS, item F, MERS participation agreement. Uh, I'm assuming this is the same thing we've done before, Eric. You have to go, you, you skipped over, um, so skip over letter E. You skipped over the budget amendment. Oh, you're right, I did, I'm sorry. Please I, don't, please don't skip over that one. <laughs> I know, you're right, you're right. Okay, Vicki, I'll let you keep, I'll let your, Eric, both of you take that one there. Um, the budget amendment there for 2021. Yes, according to the Public Act 621 of 1978, uh, we're required to adopt 
uh, a balanced budget, which usually means during the course of the year, when we know things have changed, we'll uh, amend the budget. And then hopefully at the end of the year, there's not too much of a change. If, uh, um, if you look, the, the fiscal effect, um, it's, that's sort of worded wrong. The increase to the fund balance um, will not, is not going to be $683,000, but um, the swing of what we had originally budgeted to how the budget year ended was, uh, was a positive $683,000. Um, our fund balances uh, for all the funds added together were close to between nine and 10 million dollars. And uh, so we did net, we are projecting a net positive uh, uh, amount going to the fund balance. If you look, there's a couple of them that will be taken from fund balance, but as a whole, as a city, um, we should be putting in uh, between one and 200,000 to the good. Um, this was a real interesting year with COVID and in uh, the funds that became available to us for COVID relief and uh, how the uh, road funding was handled and uh, several other things during the budget year. But if you go through there and if anyone has any problems or has any questions, um, these were turned in from each of the department heads and uh, so if you, so these are the uh, amendments that'll get us as close as we feel the year at year's end will get us to a, a balanced budget, including the transfers to and the transfers from fund balance. There's nothing there that really that sticks out that to me that was like way out of whack. So, and with what everything going on last year, basically beginning a year from not a year ago now, um, it's amazing that we were things weren't even more out of line. So, good job by everybody keeping things moving forward with everything that was pushed through on the state and federal level and. Um, we ended up on the on a pretty good pretty good even keel there. So the good Let's... news is, uh, if you remember during the audit, we got um, scolded by the auditor for not keeping our uh, general fund fund balance at the uh, twenty five to thirty percent of a year's expenses, and we did have a significant. Uh, increase in the fund balance so we're getting closer to that number and by the end of this year we should be uh, back in the good graces of the auditor for how much we have for fund yes balance. yeah the, this year was looking was looking good and uh, getting us hit, hitting that goal so hey, hey Eric I just one question and uh, maybe it's just the way it's written or it's not supposed to be there, but I know it's in the general fund. We do have a, an increase to fund balance. It looks like you were saying hundred to 200,000. looks like 227, 398. Is that right? What I see. That, the general fund? Yeah, that would be of the uh, line items that were amended. There are some other numbers that are um, smaller numbers that are, or under and might not have be amended. So it's not, that's not an exact number. I, when I did the, when I checked the math out, I came, I came between 197 and 107,000. 
So again, that's projected, I mean, in 207. 7,000. So it's going to be right in that, I would say between 200 and 225,000 okay. added to the general fund, fund balance. Good. Thank you. Looks good. All right. Is there a motion to approve the budget amendments for the 2021 fiscal year budget? I'll make that motion. I'll support. We have motion and support. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you for not letting me jump past that, Vicki. Kind of important. All right, now we're on to item F. MERS Participation Agreement Supervisors HCSP. Well, as, as you know, the, the old time people in the um, public safety, union had uh, that still had health care um, post retirement health care they they are getting so uh, that's slowly bought off so at the end of this contract we'll be all uh, caught up with public safety except for two of the public safety officers that are not retirement eligible yet so this is only being offered to people that um, I did the math and I, I mean, everybody on this list averages about 25, 26 uh, years of experience, plus or minus. And so with the, the final group that I had to uh, negotiate with was the supervisors and there are four supervisors that were hired prior to that date and uh, um, again they're offered the same thing that the uh, retirees were offered the 90 percent lump sum um, 70 percent cash buyout but um, they had agreed to spread in that over the three years because it comes out of their budget too and and uh, so it, it'd be difficult to do it a one-time lump sum like was done with the uh, retirees and um, so this the we set this up for they have a four-year contract and uh, so this would be all paid out at the end of their contract so uh, once these two contracts are done. There is uh, two people left in uh, that have uh, worked for the city um, that are eligible for this, but they at this time are not retirement eligible. So we're um, not doing anything about that. Um, Vicki and I have discussed it and we're looking at uh, um, the possibility of, of doing one of those uh, a protected funds similar to um, what the equipment fund and the fire truck funds to slowly fund it. So the, when those two people get to that point, we'd uh, have the money set aside for them and be able to fund it. But at this time, because of the way MERS is with their groups, we would have to uh, need the okay from the commission to create this group and uh, so there's a participation agreement that needs to be signed. Are they, Eric, did you say, are they doing the um, HCSP or are they doing the cash? Um, the, the, one of the tough things about MERS is that they all have to do the same thing. And so they got together and agreed. Oh, that, okay. Okay. So this, it, the, each one can't do something different. This is a little different when we've had to approve changes for individual employees in the plan. Yeah. Okay. Because this is a, a different animal than, uh, the okay. Other ones. After, okay. The, after these, uh, after, after this four year period, if they want to jump into one of the other groups and put a certain amount of their check in, they'd be able to do that. 
Okay, so this is just for the um, for the buyout, right? Yeah. And so it looks like they're all doing the the cash. I'm I'm just trying to reconcile the numbers. I see tw twenty one thousand. Oh, okay, I see twenty one thousand. The first deposit, and then the, each subsequent deposit is twenty seven. Yeah. This okay. Um, this sort of got put on the back burner with all the stuff we had going on this year with the, with the projects and um, yeah. they were nice enough not to bug me about it, but okay. then uh, Vicky started bugging me because it's almost year end for the budget. So yeah. I have to, have to do the first uh, payment this before the end of this month. And these uh, payments are budgeted in the budget, so. Okay, so the the cat the that this is all correct in the budget that we just yes. approved tonight. Yes. Okay. I'll make the motion to approve the MERS Healthcare Savings Program Participation Agreement for the four supervisors hired prior to 3-31-2008 and authorize manager Buckman to sign the agreement. I'll support. Do you want to? Do you want that one, Greg? Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. <laughs> it's all yours. Motion by Commissioner Hunter, support by Commissioner Straczynski. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Moving on. MERS Participation Agreement Public Safety Employee Contribution. Yes, this is one of our older public safety guys, I can say that about him, and because uh, he's getting up there, but he's he's also, um, he has decided he wants to put more money, more of his paycheck in there. It is a, it's a good program because it's uh, tax-free and it goes into the fund, and when you use it, um, you get a medical card to pay for your uh, co-pays and prescriptions once you retire it's tax-free there also so it's one of those rare things where it's actually tax-free money so and uh, he would like to put more of his uh, his own money into his uh, MERS savings account and in doing so he has to change his group it's just basically changing how much he's putting in, but you have to go jump through the MERS hoops of- uh, These are the ones we've done before, correct? Yeah. Getting one of, getting rid of one group and creating yes. a, a new group. When they want to change the amount. These, yep. We've done like several of these already. Yes. That this, okay, this is the one I was familiar with. I'd make a motion to approve the MERS Healthcare Savings Program Participation Agreement for Public safety employee and authorize the manager to sign the agreement. I'll support. Motion and support. Any further discussion? There's no fiscal effect to the city, but there actually is because we save on uh, right on the taxes ourselves. It's actually saving us some money and the employees some money, so it's a win-win. Yeah. These are good deals. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion passes. Next on the agenda, item H, Parks and Rec Rental Facility Agreements Reservation Form and Rules for Sports Park Facility. Take it away, Jason. All right, um, so there's a few different things that uh, I was looking for you guys' approval on uh, this evening. Um, the biggest one is the uh, reservation application. Uh, we haven't had one before. Um, as long as I've been here. Um, and this just gives us, gives us a way to uh, just track and just make sure people who are renting the facilities um, are, uh, um, we get their signature, we get their information, we could, we could document it, we can, st we can put it in a, in, a, um, in a binder and then we just have uh, um, um, evidence or um, proof that, they, that shows that they've read the agreements and the information uh, at the uh, different rental facilities. <clears throat> and then the, uh, the other, uh, 
um, <clears throat> the uh, the rules um, and the facility agreements are just basically uh, information about the different uh, rental facilities that we will have posted on the, the website. So they can go on a, the city's website, look at the rules, the information. Uh, they kind of know uh, the setup down there. Um, they, they know when quiet time is, they know what they got to do as far as when they clean up. Um, and they, they, they know what we expect out of them. So um, it's one of, the th one of those things that uh, helps us um, be a little more efficient and um, doesn't uh, um, kind of takes away the questions that they have so they, could, they don't have to uh, contact us. They can just go online and look, look at it for themselves. So. You said you've had these forms. Is it just a, an update? Um, no, uh, we we've had the sports park rules for banquets before, mm -hmm. um, but but we have not had the rental agreement information sheets at all, or the reservation applications in the past. So these are all new. Okay. Um, the the biggest change, I guess, um, would be for the reservation application is we, we require before we had a fifty dollar non refundable refundable deposit. Um, which we kind of been burned in the past. Uh, you know, they, they've broken glass and doors, windows, uh, kind of um, messed up things. So we had, uh, had excessive cleaning fees and stuff like that. So uh, we we increased the rental, uh, um, the security deposit for the weekend rentals um, from $50 to $250 to, to $250. Um, and then for the weekday rental uh, security deposit, uh, we require $100. So um, just because on the weekends, it gets a little more. Uh, that's when weddings and receptions are, are happening. Um, so we're um, kind of busier than that time. So, um, and the rec board approved this. We went through this for, for a few months and then, uh, mm -hmm. um, so. It's, it's really good. I like it. Good job. And yeah, no, I like you're updating some things here and uh, we got to increase the costs on some things, unfortunately, to cover cover costs and cover operations to keep things up to stuff so well it, it also i know you're saying that but it also gives the city a little bit more of a a, a bite so to speak i mean 50 dollars is way too low so i'm glad to see it increase enough where there should, should be some responsibility in how people are maintaining their parties you know keep them a little bit more in order money talks so nice job jason thank you all right, so we're looking for a motion to approve the... I'll make that a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the facility rental agreements, the reservation form, and the sport park, sports park rules, along with the increase on the security deposit. I'll support. All right. We have motion support. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right, Chase, looks like you got another one. Yeah, the last one. Uh, the the campground rates, um, Jay, he's been kind of doing the late work for this. And uh, um, we've, we've increased the, we're looking to increase the full service daily rate by a dollar and the electric water uh, site rate by a dollar. So um, it's not much of an increase at all. It's just our, our highly uh, used sites, um, um, the most popular sites down there. Um, and then uh, in the past, we've, we've given 10 free days uh, for a monthly rental, <clears throat> and we, we're looking to go uh, um, down to seven free days, so a week, you get a week free if you, if you rent for a month. And then uh, there's been quite a bit of demand, he's, he was saying, with the weekly rentals down there too, so um, we just wanted to post the re weekly rentals down there, uh, which we haven't done in the past. So just so people, you know, they wouldn't ask um, what the rates were. So with that, there's a discount, that type of thing. So um, he, he figures that the, the increase down there for revenue would be about $5,000 um, uh, by, by doing this. So um, it's, it's not a drastic increase, but uh, um, it's, a, it's a little more, so. I'm all for this. I think I even, I attended our rec board meeting I think it was maybe two years ago now and suggested this. So I'm glad to see you're moving forward with some increase. I thought this should have been done a while back. Um, we have a great facility that is well kept up and obviously well used and enjoyed. Uh, and anytime that, you know, it gets that high usage, you're going to incur costs in keeping it up to, up to those levels of uh, where people want to keep coming. So 
I think a dollar is nothing. So I'm glad to see you're doing something there. And I'm very glad to see that you decreased the free days, um, at least decreased them. My proposal was to get rid of them all together, but I'm glad to see that uh, you're getting some more paid days in there. So I like it. You know, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Mantle. I, I, I like to see this. I would also agree that I, I'd like to see that we don't offer any free days and have it be more of a reduced rate. So if you have, uh, you're going to rent for a month, maybe it's a 10% discount, something to that regard. Um, but that's, that's just me. Um, I'm not real big on free things. Uh, when we're dealing with taxpayers, um, city, city property and so on. But, um, I like the fact like commissioner Mantela said, Jason, I like the fact that we do see some increase, uh, and some decrease in the free days and an increase in revenue so that money can be put back into the, um, the campground. Um, I know it's a hot commodity, especially this past year when there wasn't supposed to be a lot of traveling throughout the state. And our campground was, well, when it could be used, was able to be utilized. So nice job on getting the stuff together. Yeah, and, and as far as the seven free days, it's one of those things where like, there's a lot of campgrounds around the area who do that. Um, yeah. Jay's been down there forever. He knows a lot of people who stay down there. So he's he's kind of leery about raising the race to begin with just because he gets all the, he's the one who gets all the flack. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I, def, I, I understand, definitely understand raising the race because it is a popular campground. And I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere, you know, and people love going there. So, and we see the same people over and over every year. So. Um, no, I, I get it. And we want to stay competitive to make sure we have our people coming in and our campground is full. So I get it. One thing, Jason, on your last uh, page, your uh, title proposed 2021 rates um, under on the bottom there, it's um, that those are the current rates and the yeah. top in the top are the new rates proposed. Yeah. Yep. The current, the current okay. currently, yep, currently we charge those, those rates down there per, per okay. Rate. I was just saying, cause you didn't have current weekly or monthly. Oh, yeah um before yeah uh, i never put i didn't put monthly down there but but if you just times by 20 days that's our monthly rent for the rental for that month okay. each for each of those sites and then um yeah you can't do a monthly tent rental well um <laughs> i'm a I, don't know. I mean i didn't know people <laughs> so so um and i talked to jay about this too because uh, um we've had tenors down there stay for long-term and it doesn't really bring in the best. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. You want a little more turnover on those sites, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. I'd make a motion to uh, increase the, or to approve the rate proposed 2021 rates for the campground as presented. Support. All right, motion and support. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Jason. Yep, thank you. All right, moving on. City manager's report. Um, sorry, I missed the last meeting, but the way flights get jerked around now when you go to the airport, it was... Uh, when I got home, um, the meeting was just ending. But I had a great family vacation out in Colorado. Um, came back and uh, Rodney and I have been a, had a couple of uh, Zoom meetings and personal meetings with C2AE. Um, we're getting that um, close on the draft uh, project plan for the wastewater plant. Um, the, uh, they sent over um, hard copies for all the commissioners. If, uh, if you want to stop in, Kim has those somewhere. And uh, they also have it available on a, a, a share file on their site, which uh, I will uh, forward to each of the commissioners. And uh, what this is, is a draft plan. They send the draft, they sent the draft uh, to Rodney and I ahead of time, and we went over the draft one and 
made sure everybody was on the same page. And then uh, we sent it to the um, DEQ, um, Valerie at the DEQ. She's been uh, doing these uh, projects for as long as I can remember. And so she's going over it and we'll have a copy for uh, the commission to go over. If you have any questions or uh, thoughts or ideas on how the project could be improved. Um, so I will get those, uh, that inform the, sh the file share information out to you tomorrow. And then uh, as far as picking up your hard copy, that's uh, they're here in your mailbox at City Hall. So you attended the DDA meeting last week. Um, met with uh, Brett Nevy, and we went over uh, trying to figure out what WPPI money for the grants and uh, that WPPI awards us each year and the uh, scholarships for the students um, figured out how we can do that in a little bit more than timely manner. It seems like every year we get down to the end of the budget year and uh, uh, we're uh, grabbing at straws or looking for projects. So we're uh, gonna do this year a lot, a lot more scheduled. And um, Renee and I met via Zoom with uh, Northern Initiatives, which is the the uh, company that handles our revolving loan fund, um, very important to the uh, to the IDC. Um, learned to learn quite a bit of how much of the Gladstone money is left, and once that money gets used up, we um, get thrown into a bigger pool of which there's a lot more money. Available, and uh, got to meet our new rep, and uh, it's always been sort of a a foggy area. Uh, even with the the EDC, it's just uh, you know they used to do the revolving loan funds, and now that's handled by an you know, outside company. But uh, I feel a lot more comfortable knowing that. If we need money, we should be able to get it. Um, I included in your packet uh, a MISHTA brochure that came out from uh, our, uh, our M we are MMEA members and uh, there's some money that's available from the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, MISHTA. It's uh, COVID emergency money and uh, we're going to put this on our website and post it on Facebook for any of our customers out there that have uh, have been affected by COVID and are having problems paying their rent and or their utilities. Um, it's a pretty good deal. They, they'll pay up to 12 months of rent or back rent and uh, up to $25,000 in utility bills for a family of five. So if anyone has any questions, I will be posting the information. We will be posting the information. And uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things where you have to contact the state and they will help get you set up. And that is all I have. All right, thanks, Eric. Glad you had made it back safe, and uh, glad that uh, it sounded like you got uh, busy and right back at it. So, thank you. Um, City Commission and Committee reports, Board and Commission reports, City Commissioner comments, Commissioner Skudinski. Uh, I have no comments this evening. Thank you, okay. Commissioner Hunter. I always have a couple. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I left you for last. <laughs> I'll make it quick because Michigan's on right now and they're the last Big Ten team in the tournament. Um, no. What happened to Michigan State? 
I think they bowed out in the buy-in game. <laughs> we like we like to take a year off every few oh, years. Okay. Oh, so okay. Bo- so the bottom fe- feeders can feel important. <laughs> A <laughs> um, couple of things. One, just so everybody knows, um, the 911 project, the 800 megahertz that I had talked about probably about a year ago now, um, is still is still going forward. Uh, the radios, I think I've already approached this before and explained the radios are here. We're going through a templating phase, meaning putting a template together for all the different, uh, they call them talk groups now instead of channels. So we have um, about two dozen talk groups that are gonna be afforded to the first responders in our county. So that project is still moving forward. And the reason I bring it up is because last the last time I asked for a resolution from the commissioners to uh, you know, in support of that 911 fee surcharge that the FCC is trying to change. Um, second thing, some of you may know, uh, I have accepted a job with uh, MMRMA and my regular duties as a public safety captain will be done on July the 19th. I will be starting my new position on July 20th. So with that being said, um, being a employee of MMRMA and Gladstone being a member of MMRMA, um, I, am, I will have to look at stepping down as a city commissioner. And I think we'll have some discussion as to when that will be, but uh, my new job starts and I'm, it's a bittersweet. I'm looking forward to it, but it also is 29 years of a career coming to an end. It's just, that's about the only thing you know. So fortunately with uh, MMR, MMRMA, um, I'll be in the discipline of law enforcement and some generalist as well, because I will be the only UP representative. Um, so I still look forward to working with most of you and um, it's been enjoyable and being on the commission again, and trust me, my voice will still be out there for other people to hear. Um, so that way the true facts can get out there instead of always throwing mud to see if it sticks. And uh, hopefully I can be a bigger voice so I don't bring too much attention to the commission as a private citizen. That's all I have. Well, thank you, Commissioner Hunter. I, I'm, I'm sure as the only UP voice on there, you'll also be uh, one of the loudest. I, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not, but I'll, I, I'll, I'll take it as such. <laughs> we're glad you. We're glad you're there. You represent us well. <laughs> Thank you. So, I don't have any uh, anything else uh, tonight. Uh, so moving on to City Clerk Kim, do you have anything? So I have a couple things. Um, the first one, um, when we were doing roll call, I forgot to ask just to verify, um, which is a requirement of the open meeting since we're virtual, that all the commissioners are attending virtually in Gladstone, Michigan. Um, if you could verify that by yes. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I'll include that in the record. Um, second, along with the Open Meetings Act, um, so coming up here, we have, um, as far as continuing virtual or going back to um, in person, the emergency order through the um, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services um, does go till April 19th. Um, obviously, you know, are they going to extend it? Are they not? That limits. Um, in person at non-residential venues um, to 25 people um, gathering for meetings. So that falls under that category and that goes until April 19th. But the Open Meetings Act, which was amended through Public Act 254 of 2020 to address um, the pandemic and the virtual allowing for a virtual meeting, um, that ends April 1st um, unless there is like a, uh, another statewide that is that is passed to extend it even further. Then we'd be okay if you you know if communities wanted to continue that way. Otherwise, the local entity would have to pass a state of emergency um, through their local charter to continue with the virtual meetings. So, like I said, we're kind of in a holding thing if the state comes out and extends that past. April 19th and then um, can fall under that with the Open Meetings Act to be in compliance. Otherwise, if locally we feel if we're ready to go back to in-person, we can do that um, with 25 people, the maximum 
for our next meeting at least. Um, if the state doesn't um, continue on or if they lift the requirements, obviously then that's, that's great then. But otherwise for our next meeting, which is April 12th, in person would be limited to 25 people. So kind of waiting to see what, what the state does. Um, but I think, I know the mayor's not here this evening, but when I had talked to him previously about it, you know, saying finish out March with the Zoom meetings and then looking to go back in person in April. So um, I think that's the way we're leading, but it will depend on what gets passed here with the state. So just wanted to update you on that um, for the status. And then the only other thing is um, I will be taking some vacation time next week with spring break and, and that. So unfortunately not going anywhere nice, just staying home. <laughs> so Well, the weather's been pretty nice lately. Hopefully it'll continue through your week off here and you can enjoy a beautiful spring, UP spring. Yes, thank you. And that's all I have. Uh, we have no no closed sessions, and with that, then uh, I do see we have one uh, one face that uh, kind of popped in here late. So I'm gonna kind of circle back just the public comment. If there's anybody now in attendance, I know this is the new, the online meetings are a different procedure, and getting online is sometimes. Uh, a little bit difficult. So if there's anybody who would want to make a public comment at this time, I would uh, reopen the public comment section uh, at this time. <laughs> okay. All right. So with that, then uh, uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you all and uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.